Hi, in this video, I'm showing this custom variable transformer enclosure that I made. Uh, I needed a variable transformer for my KT8 2 power project, and I didn't like the dodgy looking Chinese ones that are sold on Amazon and eBay. So I bought this bare bones variable uh, transformer and decided to make it safe and add some features like uh, this digital display. <laughs> Here are some of the features on this variable transformer. It can output 700 VA at 3 amps. Uh, it's double fuse protected. Um, so there's a fuse on the output as well, which is always a good idea on stuff like this. Uh, it has both a C13 and C14 output for convenience. Um, it has a modified digital power meter for displaying voltage, current, wattage, and temperature. I'll talk about the mod that I made uh, later on. It's got a yeah, Perspex enclosure so the device can be examined without opening it. There's an extra carbon um, holder here. Carbon, uh, it's a carbon brush. Um, all the metal fixings are insulated. So as you can see, there's actually pieces of wood which holds the whole thing together. So it's, it's quite sturdy. Um, so if any hot wire comes loose, uh, it's impossible for these to be touched, so these don't need to be earthed. The only thing is earthed are these, because they're touching the um, the transformer um, frame, uh, but all of them are earthed. All the internal connections are done using screw terminals or ring connectors with serrated washers. Um, let's run some tests. There are other reviews for the KWS AC301 on the internet. Um, it's got quite good accuracy and the version I have uses a uh, loop uh, to monitor the current flow. So I'm going to test with a 30 watt halogen lamp. So this is my dodgy um, output connector. Right, plug it in. And then let's start increasing the um, the voltage. So at the moment it's on 100 volts and it's drawing about 8 watts, um, which is 78 milliamps. So I'm just going to go all the way up. So 243.8 volts. So that's drawing about 30 watts is about right. So the wattage will vary because the my mains voltage in, in, in this house varies anywhere between 235 and up to 250. At night time it goes up to 250. So the, the output power on this will vary. Um, so I'm gonna turn it down. It's working as expected. It's 135 volts at the moment. Let's disconnect that. Put it down even more. So the the digital meter can only measure from 50 volts. Uh, I'll talk about that later. So let me just put this on. So it's on 55.5 volts. So let me turn this multimeter on. Set it to AC. And then let's start probing. So I think neutral's at the top, let's find out. So put this in there, put this in there. So that's pretty accurate. So 55.4 here, 55.55. Um, I'll measure the frequency in a second, but it's showing 50 hertz there, it should be 50 hertz. So put this back to AC and then let's increase uh, 91.3 more or less accurate is now 156.7 and on the digital meter here it's showing uh, the same 
go all the way up. So 245.5 on the KWS and 245 on the um, RS Pro. So that's fairly accurate. I'll now take this apart and show um, how it's assembled and what the internals look like. So the unit is held together using M4 screws. Um, so I'll start taking it apart. Okay, the front has now been removed, so it, one more screw left. Okay, the enclosure now has been opened. So let's pull out the front. Okay, so as you can see, um, there's the digital KWS AC freezer one meter. I haven't attached the temperature probe yet. I'll probably tape it to the, um, the side of the variac, but the current I'm drawing doesn't really get hot. Um, there's your input, output, all the connections are soldered. Um, the terminals for the KWS is screwed in. The red wire that you see here is the mod that I made and that allows the KWS uh, freezer one to always be on because it is designed to run at 50 volts. This is your um, call for measuring the current. It's connected to the neutral wire. So as you can see, there's the secondary output fuse. As you can see, all the connections to the variac are done using ring connectors and the terminals are actually soldered and covered up with heat shrinking. Um, I haven't connected to terminal D, so if you connect the live hot wire to D, um, it means you get um, 270 volts out. Um, I don't need the 270 volts, so I just want the line voltage at the maximum. Um, so I have made changes, put some labels on to show the output voltage accordingly on the analog scale. Um, the frame is made from pine wood and I've used four millimeter uh, wood inserts. Um, it gives it a nice secure fitting. Um, it's completely insulated. So if any wires ever did come off, which is extremely unlikely, it won't, it can't touch the metal apart from these, which are earthed as you can see. So you can see the earth coming from here and that's earthing um, this, this and the spindle in here. So let's take a look at the side. So you can see the brush there. The KWS AC301 digital power meter um, has an operating voltage range starting from 50 volts. That means when using it with the variable transformer, if the voltage is below 50 volts, um, you won't get a display and just under 50 volts it starts flickering so i opened it up um, and tried to figure out um, if i could give it constant power so here's the circuit board so this is the live terminal this is the um neutral this is the these two are the uh uh, current uh, meter connections. So I used the bright light and I could see this is the live coming in, which is going to some sort of um, voltage divider to sense the voltage using this chip. And on the other side of the PCB, uh, the live feeds into this capacitor, um, which is then rectified using this diode. So the capacitor is acting like a, um, a voltage dropper. Um, it's alternating current, so it passes AC. So I 
pulled out one lead of the capacitor. So there's the live connection coming in from this terminal. I then connected a red cable into this terminal connector here. The reason why there's a terminal connector here is if this cable gets pulled, I don't want the capacitor to be pulled. So this is this keeps in place. Uh, a cable then runs from from the, the terminal out and then again from the terminal to the capacitor. So here's a better view of it. You can see it's been soldered here. Uh, I added some uh, heat shrink sleeving. And this is where it's um, mounted into the case. I did have to make the hole a little bit bigger. You can see the little hole has been cut out. And that's with the enclosure closed. So live and neutral are fed um, from the output. So from the variable transformer output. And this live cable here is fed from your mains input. So the device is always powered on. Um, I was hoping it would measure below 50 volts, but it doesn't. It seems to be configured to only measure from 50 volts, but at least the unit is now always on. Here is the wiring diagram for the variable transformer. The input comes in via primary fuse. So the fuse is usually rated for the um, maximum current for the variac. In my case, I've used a two amp fuse. It's a three amp uh, variac. Uh, the, both the live and neutral are switched. The live output feeds into the C terminal and the neutral goes into the A terminal. And an additional cable from the live output feeds into the modded power input to keep the um, KWS power meter up and running. Uh, neutral feeds from here into the output socket and the live from the variac is fed for a secondary fuse. Again, it's rated for three amp max, uh, but I've used a two amp fuse. Goes into the live output pin, and then the blue and red cable here feed on the output. So this is what monitors the voltage. And then you have the um, current sensor, um, which is um, monitoring the neutral. And you have the earth connected. You also need to earth the, the variac body um, because the spindle could potentially, if there's a fault, go live. So it needs to be earthed. So this is how it's uh, wired up.